Hey y'all, welcome back to SRL Solutions, self-reliance through preparation. Today we're on the road learning how to make trash stoves or alcohol stoves out of soda cans. Well, here we are today in Perry County, Tennessee. I'm with Lloyd with Scavenger Self-Reliance. And uh, today he's gonna show us how to use, we can call them trash stoves or survival stoves, and just why you would want them and uh, to use them and what scenarios you would have to use them and how you do it and how you actually make them. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and light one up and we're gonna put some water on it and just to show you while we're doing this video, how quickly you can actually boil water once he lights it. It's going. Is it lit? Yeah, it's going to take a minute to light it. Okay. So I'm trying to try to show you that the, the flames. Okay, what what is in this one here? Uh, in that one we have denatured alcohol, high grade alcohol that's had a chemical added to it to where if you drink it, it's going to kill you. And as you see, as it's warming up, it's starting to generate and push the uh, gases out the sides of the jets. The liquid's not actually burning. What's burning is the gas is coming off the liquid, and the warmer it gets, the more it's going to evaporate and put more gas off. So now you can see the flames coming out around the side instead of just the top. So we can go ahead and set the water on there. So and also while it's changing like that, it's getting hotter. The flame is getting hotter. Yeah. Right. It's getting a lot hotter. You're getting a lot more gases coming out the holes. So. So, what uh, what are heat? the different things here that you have? There's heat on there if you want to show it warm up. Show temperature of it or whatever. Where do you, the water. Oh, the water itself? You know, like shoot down in there. Okay. You're taking those as you can. It's 78 degrees right now. But you can see it warming up, right? Look at that. That's yeah. the water warming up. Of course, you want to do this for boiling and then you. Yeah. To so is it boiling, is boiling water, you want to let boil for what? 10 minutes, most people say, is it? Yeah. Uh, basically, as soon as it hits 212 degrees, let's so boil for a few minutes, which is boiling point. At that point, there's not many bacteria that's going to live. Now, if you're in uh, higher altitudes, lower altitudes, or different things, for the most part, if you let it boil for a few minutes, you're going to be fine. You could put cans of uh, cans of soup cans, you know, yeah. on it, and also you have this here. Uh, you want to, well, that's warming up too. Is for heating. Do you have to worry about the the f the fumes at all from any of this stuff while it's uh, burning? No, because I in the house. The alcohol here is perfectly safe to burn inside of a house. Okay. I wouldn't walk off and leave because it is an open flame. And these are tea candles. You can buy a bag of a hundred of them for I think about three dollars. And the only thing is if you're gonna burn these for a heat, you're gonna do it in a small confined area, so you wanna make sure you use unscented candles because some of the scents may put off chemicals. Okay. So you wanna light these candles and um, and then you have a you said there was spacing uh, depending on how many candles you use in it? Yeah, what we're using for spacing right now is railroad spikes. If you're using three candles, you're going to get less heat, but you can use smaller things. The real benefit to more candles is they're putting off more heat, so it's going to heat up faster and make the terracotta pots warm up better and stay a lot hotter. So the premise of these is that you cover it, heat the terracotta up, but the space underneath it allows the oxygen to keep them lit, right? Yeah. Out west had a problem with the ice storm. And uh, which we've had that happen here down south, yeah, in Nashville a lot too. And uh, say you got little kids over or whatever, and you got to keep them warm. This isn't going to keep you super warm, but it's going to keep you warm enough that you're not going to freeze to death. As long as you have insulation around your house, you take your quilts, hang them over your doors, try to drop your ceiling down by hanging quilts up in the ceiling. And what this is going to do is it's going to heat this pot up, and as the heat comes out of here, it's going into this pot. I say with little kids, you can make a fort and have a good old time of it yeah. and have this underneath it. And then we're going to take the bottom from the small pot. We're going to set it up here to keep the heat coming out of this hole. Right now we're at what? Set 70 degrees. We're at 70 degrees. What's this water at now? 131. Wow. 132. 133. That's amazing. 134. And that's just from one of these little cans with, you put the natured alcohol. What is that? What else can you? Uh, other, this is the natured alcohol. You can pick this up at just about any hardware store. You can also get Coleman lamp fuel. It, uh, 
it'll smoke a little bit if so you don't have it really getting warm or throw off a little bit of black soot they're not really going to hurt you just don't breathe on them in they'll make you sneeze and this is rubbing alcohol now anything over 50 percent alcohol or 50 yeah 50 percent which would be 100 proof a proof is half percentage so the rest of that's water and you can see here this one is a dollar seventy five. So this stuff's really cheap. Almost everybody has this in their bathroom for cuts and rubbing. And then you can also use Gym Clear, which is 190 proof. That'll burn really good. And then and of course this stuff you could drink too if you want to oh keep yeah. warm. <laughs> we use this for it's a different subject, but we use this for some of the medicines we use to pull out of plants. For tink making tinctures? Yeah, this is a hundred proof, which is at the very low line of what'll burn. You need, to take, you need to heat this up with your lighter before you can up after you put it in. So it'll be warm enough to start putting off enough vapors it'll work. Okay. And then you can also use Germex. It's, uh, it'll spark a little bit like you saw that one do it first. Throw a little spark set, you gotta watch that, but it works good. And then lamp fuel. Now lamp fuel, you gotta get it really hot. So what I recommend doing is you take a piece of cotton, you stick down the little hole on top of your can, let it go for a few minutes and then light it around the side. Okay. Well, you want to you want to show how you make one of these? Yeah. Let's see while you're getting that ready, what's the temperature here? You want to make this kind or one of those? Which it, whatever's. Now the difference between this kind and this kind is basically you got holes around. This one is the top and the bottom of a can, and it just has holes punched around it. This one is the top and bottom of a can, and it has had edges mashed in there with the back of a knife. And what what would be the, the difference? Out. Why would you use this one or that one? With the uh, they're just same ba scenario, or basically they're just uh, different styles, the same thing. This is the difference between Ford or Chevy. Okay. Uh, this one here. This one breaks down a lot. This one here will. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> This one will end up putting out small little jets. This one would be better for probably backpacking because they're a little bit stronger with pressure mashing down on them. This one will wear out a little bit faster from pressure mashing down on it. But these will burn your Germexes and your uh, thicker, harder fuels that have to be a little bit more warm because you've got a bigger area for it to warm up first. Okay. But the real difference is you have jets or you have little jet holes. Okay. What you're going to use to make this is a razor blade, a nail, a knife, and an empty drink can. Okay. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your thumb on top of here. You're gonna set, set this right there. And you're not trying to cut all the way through, you're just trying to score it about twice all the way around. There's the bottom half of our stove. Now, like you said so you earlier, it around. Yeah, now we're going to cut off the top of the half. And like you said earlier, if you have really thin skin, you might want to wear gloves when you're doing this to keep from cutting yourself on the edges of the can. So you got the bottom of the can right here, got and you the got bottom the top. Of, at the bottom and the top of our can, pull the middle of it out. What we're going to do is going to crimple this so it'll fit inside of here, and then you can poke holes around the edges. For, Basically, if you're going camping somewhere, you know this. You know, there's always cans laying around somewhere around this. Unfortunately, around the earth, no matter where you're at, I'm hunting out in the middle of nowhere, and I'll run across cans. But like I was saying, I like these better than the regular uh, rocket stoves that people use for backpacking because I carry alcohol for uh, disinfection for my first aid kit already so I already got the alcohol with me and you can take one of these with you but make it before you go out and that's so lightweight or you can just scavenger for because you also, I see here too, you also use heavier duty cans too yeah that's made out of a uh, just whatever you got a heavy, heavier steel can that had food in it. Thank you. 
And uh, I'm, I'm your little helper for today. <laughs> Somebody asked me how many holes you need to put in here. Uh, about 16 works. So all I can do is go across and so they stay fairly spaced out. Okay, so just keep going like a tire iron. Just keep going across from it. You're doing lug nuts. All right, that wasn't too bad. And it's amazing how quickly, you saw how quickly that water rose up. We didn't, we ran out of fuel, so we didn't fill it back up because we were worrying about this. But you'd see how quickly it is, how easy it is to make one of these just with whatever you got. And uh, in an emergency situation, you know, you can boil water and drink water then, or heat, you know, canned, up, uh, canned uh, soup up or make rice or whatever yeah. you need to do. So, uh, well, Lloyd, I appreciate uh, all the work. We'll, uh, yeah. come back and visit sometime again with you. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope it was instructional. If you could click on the little red button that says subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And you can keep checking back in for weekly updates. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments section with whatever comments or questions you may have and interacting with you, my fans, and get any information to you that I can that's relevant to the question. And if you also want to see something in an episode, I'll be happy to give you credit for it and also get the information together for you. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, the space station, wherever social media is next. Click on more of my videos to expand your knowledge and become more self-reliant as we learn together.